Hey everyone, this is Adam Ellen Boss from Nightlight Astrology. Today we are going to take a look at the second full moon in Capricorn that we are receiving this summer, which is coming through this weekend. It is early Sunday morning, depending on your time zone. Uh, but we're going to start talking about this now because there are another couple of transits that I want to make sure we talk about tomorrow to close the week that will also prepare us for the transits of the weekend and early next week, which are very, very big. We've previewed some of them already this week, uh, but we'll start looking at them again in more depth and detail now. So before we get into it, as always, don't forget to like and subscribe, share your comments and reflections. It's always good to hear from you. And uh, knowing that there are quite a few people out there who watch but don't subscribe, if you don't mind, click the subscribe button. It really helps us grow. It helps us grow our work, the business. It helps us grow the channel and get the word out there to other people. We really do appreciate it. Transcripts of any of these daily talks can be found on my website, which is nightlightastrology.com. I want to take you over there because we have a couple of live events. We have, uh, here we go. So first and foremost, July 18th. That is today. You can attend the talk that I'm giving on Uranus into Gemini, which is one of the major transits of 2025 that we are going to start looking at and thinking about now. So this webinar is tonight from 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern. If you can't make it live, uh, you can get the recording afterward. Uh, we send it to you. So, And then three new talks posted for the autumn uh, in August, I'll be giving a talk on the eighth house, the place of karmic debts. I'll be looking at Venus through the 12 signs in September, and I will be talking about the myth of astrological compatibility, what everybody gets wrong about the astrology of relationships. If you want to hear my opinions about that, you can check out that webinar in October. So some good stuff coming up. I uh, hope you guys will check it out. And on that note, let us now shift our attention to this full moon, which is coming over the weekend. I'm going to put the real-time clock up, and I'm going to tell you about five features that I think are important to pay attention to with this full moon. Here is the full moon. This is about 5.30 in the morning, July 21st. That's Sunday. And um, it's coming through, you know, depending on your time zone, it kind of comes through early Sunday morning. But you'll be feeling this as early as the entrance of the moon into Capricorn, which is taking place early tomorrow morning. Friday, July 19th, and then it just builds over the weekend until we get to this point Sunday morning. So as this is happening, immediately following, we will see the sun oppose Pluto by Monday, July 22nd, as Mars is also trining Pluto between Sunday the 21st and the 22nd. We will also see on Sunday the 21st, we will see Mercury squaring Uranus from Leo to Taurus, can see that one right here. So we've got the sun trining Neptune and then opposing Pluto. The moon is in Capricorn full on Sunday and then going right into a conjunction with Pluto. We've got Mars trining Pluto. I mean, just dynamic, dynamic stuff going on for these two days. I want to talk today about the full moon in Capricorn and what to make of it in a few cases, given the other things happening at the same time. So five features of this full moon in Capricorn that I think we ought to pay attention to. But as always, if you guys have something that you're thinking of, feel free to add it in the comments section. All right. So the first one is growing up. The Cancer Capricorn axis has so much to do with the parent-child dynamic. Cancer was called the gateway of mankind, Capricorn the gateway of the gods. And you all heard me talk about this when we looked at our last Capricorn full moon. But the gist of it is that cancer is like the valley. It's the village and it's life at home in the world. Capricorn is so much about taking that pilgrimage up the mountain where you leave your home, where you leave the comfort and security and enmeshment or entanglements of your village and you go off to university or you go build an empire or you go climb the mountain to the ashram and start meditating on otherworldly things. Capricorn is a sign that was called the gateway of the gods because it was associated with the return of light from within the darkness and the movement of light upward. So that means whether we're chasing an ideal in this world that we have to climb to get there, or if it's speaking to the desire to leave something of the world behind in pursuit of things that are more transcendental, they all would refer to Capricorn or Capricorn would be a, a sign that would be thought of in reference to all of those endeavors in the ancient world, which is why it is the feminine domicile of Mars or feminine exaltation of Mars. And it is, um, it is the, excuse me, the feminine sign of Saturn and the exaltation of Mars. That's what I meant to say. So Saturn was associated with things that were otherworldly. 
Uh, the reason for that is that it sat as the dimmest, most distant planet at the edge of what was visible and invisible of what was here in the known and what was beyond in the unknown, that uncircumscribable part of God that we can't know that goes beyond what we can see or comprehend. And so Saturn sat at the boundary between the two. And so Capricorn is a sign that aspires to leave the world with a kind of steely determination to see what lies beyond. That can also literally translate in terms of the things that we aspire toward that are of a higher nature. So for example, if we want to build an empire, build a skyscraper, get a higher degree, anything that takes us moving upward along a hierarchy towards some recognized state of you know, mastery or success in a very worldly sense will also be very Capricornian. But for this reason, the Capricorn Cancer axis has a lot to do with the, the, the developmental journey that we all take of growing up from a greater sense of dependence and attachment and connection to our mother, our home, our family. Maybe some of us were robbed of that at a very early age, of course, too. But in an ideal archetypal sense, we journey from a space of relative um, homeostasis, you know, in the womb. We gradually find ourselves moving off onto a plot line that uh, we feel compelled to follow that takes us out into the world. So there's a developmental story across the Cancer Capricorn axis. And part of what we're here to do is to mature. We're here to set aside selfish or childish entanglements and attachments and with greater maturity uh, move out into the world to achieve and accomplish a destiny. And so Capricorn full moon can refer to a really pivotal or important moment of maturity that something has reached a, a point of needing to greatly mature. Now, the moon is debilitated in the sign of Capricorn. The reason for that is that the moon is much more the planet of residing in the valley, of being connected and attached to the things of the world that provide comfort and security. It's not that there isn't, it's not that cancer is immature, don't get me wrong. It's that um, Capricorn in particular is sort of like, you have to leave the comfort of the home behind and go out into the dark and the unknown and climb a mountain. And so there is a, a way in which the moon being hurled into out of a comfortable environment and into this, you know, difficult, cold growth journey up a mountain can feel, um, can feel a little battered or beat up by that. It's like, it's just kind of contrary to the moon's nature, which is to create that sense of at-homeness, which is why the moon in Capricorn is said to be in its exile. So when you are hurled into a plot line of having to mature quicker than you want to, it's often a moon in Capricorn situation. Whatever the case may be, though, the quest of having to mature emotionally or having to deal with emotional wounds from the past and figure out how to carry them uh, is all implied by a full moon in Capricorn that we have to grow up, we have to mature, we have to carry something difficult, we have to set aside childish or needy or codependent tendencies and um, in some ways become more self-sufficient and hardy. Okay, but on the other hand, there's also something to be said for having to stop and go, um, I've had to do, you know, if you've had to do a lot of growth and maturing and you've had to do a lot of hard things, this could also be a full moon that amplifies through the opposition to the sun and cancer and the sun's subsequent opposition to Pluto that you need to also, um, you need to find the, the well of water and life. You need to find the womb. You need to find the home. You need to find emotional security. You need to find nurturance. You need to find safety. And that sometimes the need for those things is as much an important part of your maturation and development as any kind of cold, hard, you know, reconciling with the facts and just moving on and developing a tough, thick skin. So it's like we're working with these energies back and forth. What does it mean to grow up? What does it mean to mature? What does it mean to feel safe? What does it mean to feel um, connected? How do we heal the past? You know, number two is family karma reaching a boiling point. Well, this is kind of following off from what I just said, which is that you may find, for example, that with the sun in cancer and its ruling planet, the moon in 
Capricorn, the sign of its exile, that we are reaching a moment where old patterns that, that live in us or that live in us through our relationships or our work or wherever else, that those patterns have their roots in our ancestral or family past. And we are now seeing that very clearly as a, a karma in our life ripens and the way it's expressing itself is tied back to old family baggage. Or you could say that uh, just patterns in the family, health of family members, just generally speaking, family karma now, people in the family, marriages, births, deaths, sickness, etc., surgeries, whatever, the, the plates are moving around with respect to family karma. Again, I would say also look for the way in which the situations you are in right now, the most difficult, the most tense, the most dynamic, the most creative are tied in some ways. The patterns of those situations are tied to patterns from your family past. The other thing is paternal karma. The moon in Capricorn at the 29th degree is uh, opposing the sun at the 29th degree and Immediately afterward, the sun will go through an opposition to Pluto. That death and rebirth of the sun can be about a shift or change in priorities or purpose or ambition that is very much a part of this full moon, a reorientation of our values or how we're walking our path or what we're ambitious about. But it can also be about the death and the rebirth of certain dimensions of your relationship with your dad or with paternal karma in your life overall. So ambition is one of the significations of the son, but so is the father. You could see a major moment of change with respect to solar figures, which could be a leader or a father figure or something like that. Number four, Capricorn, one of the things that defines Capricorn is having to bear a heavy weight with a sense of duty and responsibility, adult adulting, you know, so there are crosses that we are meant to carry in life, and some of them we need to learn how to pick up and carry. We just need to learn how to do it. Just zip the lip and do it. Um, and just accept that it is part of our fate. It is part of our destiny to carry difficult things and that we can do hard things while keeping a good attitude. I mean, if we can't take up that challenge from time to time to say, I can do a difficult thing and still be my smiling, happy self, then what are we doing, you know? That's Capricorn for you anyway. But sometimes there's also that point where you've been carrying something really heavy, 29th degree, moon in Capricorn, full moon, about to conjoin Pluto right afterward. Maybe it's time to just let it go. Maybe it's time to set it down. Maybe you don't need to carry this hard thing that you've been carrying for a while. It's time to release it, free yourself of a burden. So are, is it time to pick one up and, and prove to yourself that you've got a little bit more you, you have more capacity than you think you have, or is it time to lay something down? Just let it go. Though That's a crossroads, though, that we're, we might be at right now. And then number five, remember that Mercury will be squaring Uranus at the time of the full moon. It's a kind of shocking or original message or idea or piece of news or information that comes, and it is side by side with the blossoming of this karmic fruit from the past. So don't be surprised if the full moon has a kind of shocking original uh, innovative, disruptive quality to it because of the co-presence of Mercury and Uranus happening at the same time. So that is what I have. Those are the things to watch for this weekend. Um, I'd love to hear from you, hear your stories as it unfolds. Tomorrow, we're going to look at some of the more, some of the other remaining dynamics um, in a bit more of a vacuum. Uh, Sun, Pluto, for example, Mars, uh, Mars trine Pluto, etc. So a wild weekend of transits, um, one of the biggest sequences of the year, this middle of July, really powerful. All right, we'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.